Welcome to Real Genius. I'm Chris Wagner, culture critic of the Dallas Morning News. And I'm Robert Walonsky, the submissive to Chris Wagner's dominant. I don't do romance, Robert. That's what you say. I just want you to know that. Of course, when I say what I said, it's only because I would not have otherwise seen Fifty Shades of Grey if it were not for the fact that we were going to discuss this today and it's something you wanted to talk about at great length. That's why I sat next to you for two hours and some odd many minutes Wait. whilst wondering, why am I not just watching Cinemax? I want hits for the video. Oh, Fifty Shades right. of Grey. We can I just say it like... For 10, I don't understand why, I mean... Fifty right. Shades of Grey, Fifty Shades of Grey. So this, of course, is the adaptation of the classic 21st century novel... Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades of Grey, <laughs> which I know everybody has read repeatedly whilst under bed sheets with flashlights in the middle of the night or out in public in an airport. I've seen many people reading it in an airport, and sure. I keep wondering... So I don't remember my mom reading Wifey in the middle of the airport when I was a kid, the Judy Bloom novel that... What about Fear of Flying? <sighs> yeah, I think that was pretty, uh, pretty widely read. In fact, it was widely read at my house by one of the two of us currently sitting here at the moment. Yes. But I'm just... You met, so you mentioned Cinemax. Theorizing. And, I, I, and then as Robert said, this is the, the not long awaited by us, but the, it's, it'll make a few bucks, uh, erotic... Adaptation of the erotic novel. I was going to say, there's erotic. nothing erotic about it. Uh, Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James, originally Twilight fiction, correct? Or, I thought or fan fiction. I'm not gonna, I originally thought it was written by E.L. Doctorow. Ooh, that would be awesome. Fifty yeah. Shades of Ragtime. Right. That would be sweet. Um, it's about a guy played by Jamie Dornan who doesn't do wrong. He's got some serious intimacy issues. He, he also has some serious the, American accent issues. He has some American accent issues. He's got a playroom with all these like pulleys and whips and ties and stuff. And he meets an ingenue played by Dakota Johnson, Don Johnson and Melanie Griffith's daughter. Looks a lot like Don Johnson actually, in, a, in an odd way. Right, especially nude. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, and it's kind of about this power struggle, I call it a kind of a limp power struggle. Between, Whoa, limp! Between see, I, know, I, was, I see, I almost went with flaccid. I was like, that's well, no, you no know. way that's the way that's getting Nothing in. Nothing like a movie that pretends to be erotic that brings out the 12 year old yes, in all of us. Yes, exactly. Um, the guy who is just sex, the epitome of just sex, down to the sadomasochism. Like you. Uh, you said it, not me. Um, and the woman who wants romance. And she likes the sex, too. Let's, let's not get it wrong. She likes it. It's weird. One of my biggest problems with Fifty Shades of Grey isn't the fact that it's awful, which is it's pretty bad, a, a pretty good summation of it. But it's the fact that so Dakota Johnson plays a college student, a graduating college student, an English literature, major. an English literature major uh, who is assigned, who goes to interview um, Christian, Christian Grey. Grey. So, corporate titan of un, of undescribed business. So we find out interests. that she's a virgin yes. at the age of whatever. Yes. 30. It happens. Right. No, sure. probably probably 22, 23. Sure. Hey, Steve Carell, we've been we've seen that movie before. <laughs> Much sexier movie by the way. Um, <laughs> but not as funny. I think Savic Private Ryan was a sexier movie. I'm well, I was going to make a really horrible <laughs> joke. But um, so I have a question. Yes. This is a woman who's never had sex or done anything. Correct. Every single, one of my biggest problems with this, and I, was ta I ran into my friend Sarah Heffala, a great writer. We, I ran into her last night as, as I was leaving North Park. And I said to her, one of my biggest problems with the film is not that it's just the cliched rescue fantasy. I mean, it's the counterpoint to Pretty Woman. It is just the generic, I'm going to save you from being the worst version of yourself, which is a, you know, the, the oldest cliche in literature and film. But my biggest problem with it is the fact that it's not just not sexy. Every sex scene in the movie is at the same sort of intensity level. She only shows every, her, her idea of passion, her idea of, of getting turned on is the same expression. It's the same arch of the back, it's the same biting of the lip, it's the same Boy, does she bite eyes. her lip a lot. It, but it, I started feeling really worried about the lip. I was like, is that lip okay? Does it have tooth marks all but over it? But the movie never rises to any level of passion, sexuality, sensuality, or eroticism. It just stays at the same sort of low-level, generic hum. I, I mean, the, 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 the fake orgasm in When Harry Met Sally is, is more real. Oh, it's hot. 
than anything in this movie. And I don't get why people are attracted to and drawn to and obsessed with um, a book that's poorly written. I mean, I've, I've looked at the book, I've tried to read it, it it's subliterate. And then I, and I'm not trying to be, you know, God, I'm so much better than this. I just don't get it. it, it there's nothing. It's not. This is not. We would not be sitting here. This is not for either of us. We would not be sitting here talking about this if we didn't think people will click on this. But I get the because movie. it says Fifty Shades but, of but, Grey. But I get, look, I get the book. I mean, I get the appeal of the book. It is hardcore porn soft, masquerading. Okay. Is, the movie softcore porn. Yeah, but the book. The book the is more porn hardcore, okay. masquerading as literature. Right. So I get I get the whole genre. It's it's an old genre. It dates back. You know, you want to go to. You know, Henry James, whatever you want to. The story of O. Yeah, I mean, you go back all the way to, it's 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 the oldest probably Rabelais. brand of fiction that there is. Who doesn't like reading about people having sex? Great, good times. But I don't get the movie version of it, because I don't understand when there, when porn is available at your fingertips, as it were, when Cinemax makes this available after dark. Why does this exist? Because it's not well done. It can't be the porn that audiences, I think, kind of want it to be. It's really scared of its bondage aspects. I mean, the, the closest this movie gets to, there, there are four words used in the film that I can't use that, um, that, uh, are the closest it gets to addressing, I think, some of what makes what appeals to people about the book in terms of its themes, and those, its ideas, and its and actions. those words are in a legal contract and and read right as such. Let's take a look at a, a scene real quick. Fifty Shades of Grey. Um, this is Anastasia. Stacia. Why Stasia. am I here, Christian? And Anna, Ani, something like that. DeFranco. Uh, waking up in You're Christian's here because hotel I'm of leaving you bedroom. Alone. Don't. Why'd you send me those books? I thought I owed you an apology. For what? For letting you believe that I... Listen to me. I don't do romance. My tastes are very singular. You wouldn't understand. Enlighten me then. So I think you, know, you hit a couple of points. One is you can see the kind of sex that's in this movie at 1.30 in the morning on Cinemax, or so I hear. Those are you can see it at things that my noon. Friend, things it's that my, like my friends right. tell me. So. Um, and then what else is there in this movie? There's a story that's really poorly told. This is a really bad storytelling. I, I kept looking at my watch. I felt like Jane Fonda and Clute looking at my watch during sex constantly. Speaking of a sex, you're uh, sexy. Yeah. It's, and so it's just, it just does not move very well. Um, I found myself... Unlike Anastasia. I found, I found myself kind of wanting it to be over. And it wasn't, well. and it wasn't, you know, well, yeah, we can keep going, can't we? Um, and it's not even bad enough to be funny. And it, so I was, I was hoping for a showgirls type right. experience where it just goes through the looking glass and perhaps becomes a cult favorite and you something you just enjoy laughing at. And I got that once in a while here, but I don't think it's that kind of movie. And I, I really wish it were that kind of movie. But see, I think it's funny. At the screening we went to, a packed house screening, there was a lot of laughing. Yeah, there and was. And these are people who really wanted to be there. I, I'm not sure this movie is going to appeal to those who thought it was going to appeal to them. To be fair, I think some of the laughter is supposed to be there. I think there are... We, the, the first half hour of this movie, I think, actually has some pretty decent romantic comedy... Material. Okay. I, I was thinking. I, I think I called it the Cinemax rom-com version of American Psycho, because um, I kept thinking Patrick Bateman would live in this house. It's, yes. it's so clean and, and spacious and Spartan. And there is a lot of that. And kept waiting for some Huey Lewis. Or and she Whitney makes a reference Houston. to him being a serial killer. At one yes. Point. Yes, she does. So, 
you know, and I, I maybe I wanted a little bit more of that. I just think that you know, let's face it, I we would not I would not be going to this movie if I were not writing about it and talking about it. And I think it's important to acknowledge that. I and mean, I think there are I think the people that read this book will go into this movie pretty excited to to see how it translates. I didn't read the book, but I remember a lot of women I knew at the time were trying to read it or reading it. The ones that I know and kind of respect had to put it down because the writing was so horrible. But it's sold millions and millions of copies. As Bill Murray says in Groundhog Day, people love blood sausage. It doesn't mean it's right. No. But I will say this. I did approach the first half hour or the, try to approach the whole movie like a comedy because I think there are some some parts that are supposed to be funny. I always I watched for some unknown reason, maybe because I liked her, because I liked the cast, the Fox show that Dakota Johnson was on, a, a sitcom in which she was a single mom, having struggles finding good guys to date. Um, and I just sort of kept imagining that this was the R-rated version of the continuation of that, because she's in a completely different movie. She's far more charming, far more interesting, far more engaging than her male counterpart who is supposed to be in the book so attractive that he stops a room anytime he walks into it when in fact in the film he looks like if Henry Cavill and Colin Firth had a kind of squishy face looking baby I don't get that either I mean I'm sorry this goes to be the most handsome man in the universe drop dead gorgeous and you look at him and go really and I've asked a lot of women so it's, it's not just me right you're, I mean you're just not that into him no this is just sub Jane Austen is all it is, and you couldn't get Colin Firth to do it, so you got a guy who looked kind of like him to do it, I guess. Younger. And it's nothing but subtext. Better abs. Because uh, the text itself is illiterate. I mean, nice abs. Yeah. yeah. Got to give it up. For the oh, abs. you're talking about me? Yes. Thanks. Yeah, you've been working out. No. Uh, that is Fifty Shades of Grey. <sighs> Fifty Shades of Awesome. Fifty Shades of Boredom. That was my main problem. I was bored for most of this movie. Uh, I was aroused by your boredom. Yes the kind of symbiotic relationship we have. <laughs> I am the submissive to Donald. Uh, we will see you next week with a sexier movie. Hot Top Time Machine 2. See you then.